In today's video, I bought a mysterious childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection. Time to do, 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 do. What is up? We are back with another epic video. In today's video, we have, as you guys saw, a childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection. And I bought this one pretty much completely blind. I did have a couple of pictures. I normally take a look at it before I buy it or anything like that. But this time, I didn't do that. I just went ahead and paid for it because it's only like $500. So it wasn't a crazy like three, four, five thousand dollars one. Let's see if that was a good decision or if I got completely wrecked. But before that, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away these three promos from the Infinite Forbidden Retail Boxes. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. I said promos or tokens, but whatever. Just let me know down below. Did we get a good deal at $500 or was this a bust? All right, and this is not the whole thing. There's also this. So there's a bigger one as well. Let's start off with album number one. One, which is small enough to be on the screen. So is that an ulti zombie mask? Oh, okay. We're off to a good start. I thought that was a super rare first. Wait, let's see if we can get this out. That is an ulti zombie mask. Let's see what kind of condition this thing's in. It's childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection. So I'm like, this is an actual, I'm not just saying childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection. Like it's an actual childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection from a guy. And uh, that usually means bad condition, but let's see. Okay. Wait a second. Is this thing mint? <laughs> like not even near mint. This thing's like, I mean, it looks good. It might be a little, is that where I put my finger? That might be where my finger is. But yeah, you can see a little bit of finger ointment, finger oils on there, but that, that can come off. Honestly, that's a really nice looking card. Shockingly nice condition for the first card we look at. Okay, great start. And you can tell it's also childhood based on these sleeves. I mean, these these are classic old sleeves. Uh, Unlimited, not crazy. First Ed, okay. First Ed Shinato, let's let's check it out. All right, let's see. Shinato, king of a higher plane. Let's see if this one's in great condition. The one I had as a kid was certainly nostalgic condition. I traded for it even though it was bent in half. All right, we have, yeah, a little bit of a ding up there. Yeah, that's to be expected. Uh, we got a little bit of a ding on the side. Yeah, this is more like mod play area. So that's kind of what I was expecting for these. But uh, hey, I'm not going to be mad if a couple of them are not. Shinado first at, I really love that card. Okay, let's keep going. Let's. Um, we're only going to hit the big stuff. Uh, there's an unlimited left leg of the forbidden one. That's pretty cool. Original print. A Neo Daedalus, that's not expensive. Volcanic Rocket, that is a super rare Force of the Breaker Special Edition. Uh, Blade Knight's cool. It's not a misprint, so nothing crazy. Uh, anything else? That is SCP, not MRL, so not big. Super, super, super. Neo Salius is nice for Edison decks, potentially. Then we have a, a, a Hobby League. I almost said Hidden Arsenal. Hobby League Giant Rat, that's pretty cool. First at Sasuke Samurai, probably not crazy because it's just a super, but... Very cool. I can't even turn these pages. They're so uh, childhood Yu-Gi-Oh! collection-like. Okay, we have a Grand Mark, not an ulti. Sky Scraper, like a sky scraper. Okay, Flare Scarab, Metamorphosis. That's a couple bucks. Not bad. Then a Big Burn and a Ryza. Is that it? This this mini one? Okay, other than that first card, pretty much what I expected. Nothing too crazy. We got a couple of dinged up Shinado. I mean, this was the big card. That's probably a 30 40 dollar card if i had to guess still pretty good though i mean nice nice shape so we're hoping this big binder has like most of the bulk because we paid 500 dollars. so uh we'll kind of try to add up the big cards and see if we i mean we want to get over 500 because ideally you're not paying what it's worth because then you're losing money if you ever sell the cards you really want to have like a little bit of a margin so we'll see if we did hit any sort of margin or not all right let's open it up okay trying a new style we'll zoom in on certain cards but as we go through uh, uh that's a jmp jmp bpt 2003 uh i can't really tell what that one is uh, that's a DB1. Okay, we got the Silent Magicians, Ancient Sanctuary Unlimited. BPT right here. Let's pull that out because BPT. Oh, that's a reverse foil. Wait a second. BPT 2002 Red Eye. So we are doing it a little bit of a zoom out right now. So the angles are going to be a little weird with how, how the stuff looks. So I'm going to try to figure this out. Uh, we're at 0. 0.5, which is a little weird. Okay, back looks pretty, pretty scuffed up. It might look a little bent and that might not be the case. That might just be because of the angle. But that's a reverse foil secret, which is really nice. That I don't know exactly what that's going for but that's still pretty good definitely better than a regular secret and bpt red eyes are decently valuable so that's a, probably one of the better cards we've seen the bottom right red eyes is sdj so let's go to the next page okay so they're all on the same page that makes this easy this trihorn is definitely not a gold letter so nothing too crazy there all right yeah then we have vice dragon from jump we have the b skull dragon original from metal raiders that's pretty good same thing with Thousand Dragon, MST. These are unlimbed, so these are worth a few dollars, but they're not crazy. Then we have the Five-Headed Dragon. The, uh, okay, the, what is this, Bandai or something? I don't know what that Monster Reborn is, the original art. We have the Goblin Attack Force, Ultimate Rare Hallowed Life Barrier, but unlimited. 
uh some sort of foreign dl1 that's japanese i think uh rainbow dragon dl1 blue eyes tune dragon and we got the classic artwork of dark magician down here that used to be my profile picture nothing huge on that page but some really cool cards definitely nostalgic definitely old school feels like a childhood collection then we have a mystical elf okay uh dark sage that is db1 we're going to try to see anything else really cool. Yana Garas is down here, if you guys can see that, and Summon Skull. So those are both good. First Ed Change of Heart, that's from... Oh, that's from Metal Raiders. That's not Starter Deck. Okay, we definitely got to pull out a Change of Heart. That is pretty crazy. Problem is, this angle is not as good for showing off the cards. Maybe what we'll do is we'll pull out the nice ones, and we'll look at them at the end at a different angle. How about that? Let's do that. So I'll save that one for the end. Oh, Gear Free the Swordmaster. This is not a First Ed, but this is an Ultimate Rare. So I'm going to pull this out, and we'll try to look at this toward the end. We'll try to get some conditions, some value, and stuff on those. Gate Guardian Original Print. I mean, it's not First Ed. Dead, but it is still an original gay guardian that's pretty cool all these are unlimbed down here for the gay guardian pieces it looks like everything else really the penumbral soldier lady of course is an ulti because that's the only card you can pull from soul of the duelist you guys know if you know okay unlimbs first ed that's a vwxyz not really super rare there those are all unlimbs pretty nice cards very cool collection but not expensive okay there's a ultimate rare jumbo drill so that's cool uh ultimate rare jumbo drill we'll pull that out even though it's not crazy expensive there's a ufo roid don't like you. We have the United We Stand UFO Red Fighter. A little bit cooler. Okay, Cyber End. It's Ultra, but I'll look at it anyway because it's Cyber End. That is still pretty nice. So we'll check that one out later. Swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Bunch of Magicians Valkyries. Oh, that's a First Dead Lily. Okay, that's pretty good. These really in near men are only 70 bucks. They're not like that crazy anymore, but they're still really nice cards. A uh, First Dead Double Spell, but it's Double Spell, so it's not that big or anything spark blaster is that an ulti too okay and feather shot and hero signal all ultis up here all right so three of those those are all ultimate rares not like big big money ones i think hero signal is pretty decent but the other ones are not as big that uh that's a pretty cool card right there the uh, neos that's hard to pull too the ultra rare uh anything first at here prima it's an ulti um that's an ulti too they're not really big ultis though so i'm not gonna pull them out same thing with these Actually, Inrise could be decent. Inrise could be decent. Force of the Breaker. I'll pull that out. That that's not horrible. Uh, more on limbs. Forbidden Legacy right there. Confiscation. Band card. Uh, very cool Karibo art on that one. Then we have the Sphinxes, the rarest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Rapid Fire Magician. These are an, another couple ultis. These are not like huge ultis, but okay. Let's pull out this Duster though. That's a pretty pretty nice card. Pretty nice card. Not huge money, but pretty nice. Then we have a Chthonian Soldier. That's an ulti. So there's a bunch of like low-end ultis in here which is cool they tribe infecting a few bucks uh everything else i mean it's all good stuff but nothing huge okay queen's knight that's not huge either if it's not first ed but still a really cool card mid shields and ulti um necklace of command let's go to the next page okay pot of greed super rare from dark beginning is really cool uh raigeki raigeki that's a db1 what does that say db1-en okay man eater anything first ed no all on limbs so cool but not in amazing or anything so uh a Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke. Pretty nice card for uh, GOAT format warriors and stuff. Ultimate rare, though not first dead. Still pretty cool. Um, let's see. That's an ulti on Assault on GHQ. First Ed Invader of Darkness. So this is a really cheap secret, but it's still first dead, and it's from Invasion of Chaos. So I'm going to pull that out. Edoqual is a really cool card, actually. I use it sometimes in Wield Goat, which if you guys have not seen Wield Goat, the new series where I'm playing GOAT format with guests from other YouTubers and stuff, go check it out. We've done... Uh, the time you're seeing this three episodes there'll be another one coming this friday so keep an eye out for that very fun series so that's what that reminded me of a lot of these cards do that actually gill and duo that's like 12 dollars near mint so it's not horrible uh anything else big okay here are the heroes none of these are ultis i don't think but these are still nice cards like uh tempest is in here I mean, we'll check out the big ones why not we'll check out the big ones probably these two are like the biggest ones uh the shining phoenix of forcer and that then we have uh, Ultimate Rare Spear Strike. We've got Dark Neos, Thunder, Thunder Giant. Plasma Vice is cool. That's the promo, though. Uh, let's see. Justy Break. What's that from? That's from some kind of... Kind of uh, man, I can't, can't speak. Some sort of Duelist Pack is what I'm trying to say, man. You know, I cannot spit it out. Okay, first Ed Exodia Necros. That's cool. That could be a really cool card. Uh, Grave Robber. I love that card. It's hilarious. Um, anything else? Some more ultis. I mean, it's a very solid childhood collection. There's a lot of great cards in here. More Andros. How do they have two sets? They're so rare. 
That's crazy, man. That's crazy. How'd they acquire this? Sharpshooters. Okay, okay. Nothing crazy there. Anything else big here? Gemini Summoner is pretty cool. Tactical Evolution. Super. That must be a promo or something because it's a limited edition. Greed. Oh, wow. They have Greed and they have Penumbral Soldier Lady. Who would have thought? It's crazy. It's almost like they're in every single box. Okay. Anything else before we start checking out these, uh, the nicest cards? We have the Harpy. These are not Retro Pack 1, right? These are still a few bucks, though. The SP1 version. Sneak Peek or something. Beautiful Silent Swordsman. I love that card. Anything else big? Most of this is just like kind of super -y stuff. Not too insane. And yeah, okay. So let's move on. Let's check the conditions of some of these cards. All right, we're back to the uh, the old angle, which is or the, the new angle, but new, but old. You know what I mean? So it's much more comfortable. It feels better. You can actually see the cards. This is a really nice Exodia Necros. It is not as minty as that uh, other one was. It does have some pack scuffing, but this almost looks pack fresh. Centering on it is definitely not great. It's definitely off-centered. Still a nice looking first dead card. Let's try the Elemental Hero Tempest. So that's that's really nice condition, actually. Very happy to see that. The Tempest. Oh, whoa. I thought that was a crease, but that's just this shiny arm bracelet thing. Pretty nice as well, actually. That, that card looks pretty good. Pretty nice. It has a print line down the middle right there. Okay, let's see about the... Elemental Hero, Shining Flare, Wingman. Will you be as nice as these others? Because so far, a lot of these cards have been in good condition, surprisingly. I mean, they, I guess they've been double sleeve for a long time and not really messed with, it seems like. So that card is nice. Does have a little bit of scratching on the back. I mean, it does have a pinhole right there as well. So yeah, like LP on that one, but still a really nice LP. Okay, Invader of Darkness. Let's check this thing out a little bit closer. If this thing's nice, it'd be a pretty cool one to grade if it was uh, gradable. PSA 10. Okay, it's definitely not. Uh, it's got a binder ding in it, as you guys can see right there. Binder ding right there. So, yeah, unfortunate on that one. Still a nice card. Okay, Sasuke Samurai. This card, very nice for goat format. It's a, just a solid card. I think it's when they're in defense, it just automatically destroys them. Yeah, face up. The face down defense is uh, Mystic Swordsman level two. That's a really useful one as well, but a smaller attack. This guy is definitely not in perfect shape. He has some creases on the edge, some scuffing on the back, some... Ding on the top. Yeah, he's in pretty bad shape, actually. Probably, like, heavy play. All right, Harpy's Feather Duster. This one, it doesn't get crazy expensive. I think it's, like, 20 bucks, maybe, in near mint, uh, if I just had to guess. But still a really classic one. I mean, this was the original print of Harpy's Feather Duster in the United States. It's pretty clean, actually. It's a game promo from the uh, Stairway to Destiny Duel. I thought, why do I think the Fallspawn... No, Fallspawn Kingdom is Mizoa and stuff like that. That's still a nice-looking card, though. Let's check out the Enrise. For some reason, I feel like this is expensive. Or at least like 30, 40 bucks, something like that, which is still pretty expensive for a card. Wow, the foil on it looks really good. Uh, front looks good. Back looks good. That card's in really good shape. Okay, Sky Scourge Enrise. That might be some money right there. Uh, I feel like I feel like we're doing okay on this collection. I feel like we are actually getting a decent amount of our $500 so far. We'll see. Uh, we'll have, we'll kind of add it up on the screen to see like what we got out of these nice cards at least. Because I mean, with these being in good shape, that'll definitely help. That looks like a near mint uh, feather shot as well. That's that's good. It's unlimbed, so not crazy. Let's check out the first ed hero signal. This one could be nice in your mint as well. Top edge does have a little bit going on there. That's not great. Feels like it's a little bent somewhere. Maybe like a binder ding, but like a really minimal one. The light is kind of hitting it weird. It kind of goes down there and then it goes back up and then back down. So it feels like it's a little bent, uh, which is really the main issue. And then these, you guys can see right there, it's a pretty bad edge right there. So this one is probably LP, maybe mod play, depending on how you feel about that really hard to tell about that bend so that's why i wouldn't knock it all the way down maybe because some of them can be really obvious and really bad okay spark blaster let's see uh spark in the blaster very beautiful yeah that that one looks really good from what i could tell i mean there's a little bit going on with that corner but it may be a little tiny dot right there if you guys could see it but Still near mint, probably. All right, Lily. What are you looking like, Injection Fairy Lily? Let's see. First edition, Lily. Are you going to be in great shape? Let's see. Centering is horrible, of course, because it's Legacy of Darkness. Um, is there anything going on here? I mean, yeah, yeah. You guys can see if you guys can see that. Scuffing. You can't really see the scratches as much. There's some on the left side right there. It's really easier to see in person. So probably have this one at like... A lightly played, but still a pretty nice lightly played, to be honest. Cyber in Dragon. This is just the Ultra. If this was an ulti, it'd be really big money, obviously. But let's check the Ultra out. A little tiny bit of scuffing on the back, but this is probably one I'd still... Uh... Is there a bin there on that corner? There might be like an indent right there too. You guys see that? Yeah, there's an indent right there. Really small. There is an indent there. Oh, I was going to have it at near mint, but I think that's probably LP with that 
small other stuff. Still, I mean, like good looking LP. And these cards are way better than expected. Childhood Yu-Gi-Oh collection, I was expecting like mod play, heavy play for everything. And it looks like a lot of this stuff is not, which is really awesome. So hopefully it will, uh, you know, continue that way with these last few cards. Okay, the Jumbo Drill definitely has an issue up there. That thing's bent. Uh, back's got some, yeah, okay. So that's probably a mod play, even though it's looks pretty good though. It looks pretty good, but there are a couple issues. A bin pretty much always, like, it's hard to keep it away from, like, if it's a visible, like, bent in the card, you know? It's not just, like, a, a bin where, like, the light reflects differently. That's still a bin, but it's not as bad. When it, like, is literally bent where you can see, like, a line, that's usually mod play at least. Okay, Secret Rare. That's, man, that card looks good. That's an original Gate Guardian. This one, I feel like there's something wrong with it, but I can't tell what it is. So there's, like, this weird, you guys see that line that goes across right there? There's some kind of weird like print thing going on where you can kind of see like this hollow like line. I don't know what that is, but you can like really see it in person. And then this corner feels like it's bent back a little tiny bit. It's not bend is a strong word for it. And then there's something going on with that edge. The back has a little bit of scuffing. Yeah, there, that bottom is definitely something wrong with it. You can see it on the back too. And then there's a bunch of stuff on there okay yeah a very very cool looking card but i would say mod play on this but original print so beautiful a little bit of a fade to it too uh gear free the sword master so same reason i pulled this one out is because it's also an insane looking card that's why i have it uh even though it is just an unlimited ulti but the card itself i mean check that out possibly one of the best ultis ever made in terms of how it looks oh there's some uh imprint stamp right there of something it's a big circle i don't, I don't know what that is that's weird because there's not a circle on the front so i don't know what that is but it's just kind of like a print thing it seems like because the card card looks pretty good i mean i'd probably call this near mint even with that circle on the back because it kind of seems like it's a print thing that would probably hurt a grade but i wouldn't put it as like light play because of that all right last card honestly pretty nice collection so far i mean it feels like we did pretty good we got some pretty nice cards that, oh this is a wait a sec what is wrong with this card Asian English. Okay, I was like, this, this is not a first dead Metal Raiders card. It's so shiny. Yeah, there we go. I was like, this thing's either like, people don't usually re-back in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I was like, this is definitely not the right card. Asian English. That all checks out. That makes sense. Uh, why it's so shiny. Not a ton of value there, but there's a little bit because it is first dead. It is Metal Raiders, but the Asian English definitely is going to hurt. But overall, I mean, here's what we got out of those big cards that you guys saw. That's probably not $500 worth, but we'll find out. Either way, still a pretty nice collection. And if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and go check out Ruxin34.com if you want to support the channel. Also, don't forget to check out Wheeled Goat coming up this Friday. Go check those out. They're super, super fun. If you enjoy old school cards, you'll like them. And uh, that's about it for this one. We have a lot of videos coming up soon that are pretty epic, though, so keep an eye out. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Ernesto Deanna, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Brandon Cheney, Ian Musa, Jr. Barding, Robert F., Chang Lang, and Adelso Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.